In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the volume by rotating a region around the x-axis or the y-axis using the disk method and the washers method. So let's begin. Let's say if we have a curve and the curve looks like this and we wish to calculate the volume of the curve from let's say A to B. One method that we can use is a disk method and the disk method works by taking a cross-sectional area this is going to be the radius but if we take the cross-sectional area we can turn it into a disk as we rotate the region about the x-axis we could form basically something that looks like a disk now I'm going to draw this disk the other way. Notice that this forms the shape of a cylinder. The cylinder has a radius r and it has a height h. The volume of a cylinder is basically the volume of the cross-sectional area times the height. The cross-sectional area being the circle on top which is pi r squared. Thus the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times height. And so the volume of this blue disk, it has a height h, which you can also view it as a dx or delta x, and it has a cross-sectional area, which is pi r squared. Now, to find the volume of a solid, we need to add up all the little disks from a to b. If you make other disks, there's another disk that you can make. My drawing's kind of terrible, but basically the idea is that you add up all these smaller disks to find the total volume of the uh, of the object or the solid that is created by revolving about the uh, x-axis. But to find the volume, you got to find a volume of you have to integrate the cross-sectional area from A to B, and the area is basically pi r squared. where r is going to be a function of x. And so this is the equation to find the volume using the disk method when revolving about the x-axis. The main idea you need to understand is that the cross sections that are used for this technique is basically a circle and the area of a circle is pi r squared. Now sometimes you may need to find the area when it's revolved or rotated about the uh, y-axis. But let's just go over some basic things. So if you want to find the volume rotated about the x-axis, this is going to be the shaded region. And it has to be in terms of x. So the radius is between the x-axis, that's where the solid is being rotated about, and it's between the curve. So that's the radius in terms of x. So the volume is going to be from, you have to integrate the function from a to b, and it's going to be r squared of x dx. That's how you find the volume of the solid rotated about the x-axis. Now let's say if you want to find it about the y-axis. Instead of using a and b, we're going to use c and d, which represent y values. The radius is going to be between the y-axis and the curve, since we're rotating about the y-axis. So the volume is going to be pi, integration from uh, c to d, r of y squared times dy. So that's how you can find the volume rotate about the y-axis or a line parallel to the y-axis. 
and this is for the x-axis or a line parallel to the x-axis. All right, let's start with an example. Let's say we have the function y is equal to the square root of x, and we want to find the volume when rotating this curve about the x-axis, and we want the portion of the curve where it's bounded between x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 4. So feel free to try this problem. The first thing you want to do is you want to plot the function. The square root of x looks like this. The radius is the distance between the curve and the axis of rotation. In this case, we're rotating about the x-axis. And we want the portion of the curve between x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 4. So this is the region that we want. The first thing you want to do is find out what r of x is equal to. r of x is equal to y, which y is equal to square root x. So r of x is equal to both of these things. But we want it to be in terms of x. So we're going to use square root x. Now let's use the equation. The volume is equal to pi times the integration from a to b, r of x, and dx, and let's not forget to uh, square it. So this is going to be pi, a is 0, b is 4, r of x is the square root of x, and we're going to square that, and then we have dx. Root x squared is basically x. So let's integrate this function. The antiderivative of x is going to be x squared over 2. You have to add 1 to the exponent and then divide by that result. So now let's find the value of this uh, definite integral. So first let's plug in 4. So it's going to be 4 squared over 2 and then we'll plug in 0. 4 squared is 16 0 squared is just 0, and uh, 16 divided by 2 is 8. So the final answer is a pi. Now it's your turn. Find the volume of the solid generated by rotating the function y is equal to 1 over x about the x-axis bounded by the region x is equal to 1 and the line x is equal to 3. So feel free to pause the video and work on this example. Use the disk method to calculate the volume. So the first thing we need to do is plot the function. So the right side of 1 over x, it looks like this. But we only want the portion from 1 to 3. So we only want this region. and we're going to rotate it about the x-axis. So the radius, r of x, is the distance between the x-axis, or the axis of rotation, and the curve. So r of x is simply equal to the function 1 over x. The way you find it is you take the top part of the function, or the top part of this line, which is 1 over x, minus the bottom part, which is uh, y is equal to 0. That's the x-axis. So it's 1 over x minus 0, which is just 1 over x. Now, even though that process seems useless at this point, it's useful when you're rotating about an axis that is neither the x or y axis, which we'll cover later in this video. But for now, r of x is simply 1 over x. So the volume it's going to be pi integration from a to b, or 1 to 3. And then it's going to be r of x squared dx. So this is pi, 1 to 3, 
1 over x squared dx. 1 over x squared, we need to rewrite it. We can write it as x to negative 2. And now let's use the power rule. Let's add 1 to the exponent. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And then we need to divide by negative 1. So rewriting the function, we can bring the x back to the bottom to get rid of the negative exponent. So this is going to be pi times negative 1 over x evaluated from 1 to 3. So this is going to be pi times negative 1 over 3 minus negative 1 over 1. Always start with the top number 3 and then subtract it by the 1 on the bottom. So this is basically negative 1 third plus 1 over 1. Now we need to get common denominators so let's multiply this by 3 over 3. So what we have is negative 1 over 3 plus 3 over 3. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. So the final answer is just 2 pi over 3. Now let's try a few examples of finding the volume of a solid when it's rotating about the y-axis. So let's say that y is equal to x squared and the curve is bounded by the lines x equals 0 and y equals 4. And we're rotating about the y-axis. So let's begin by drawing a graph. So this is the y-axis, which we're rotating about. And the graph y equals x squared, the right side of it, looks like this. Now this is the line x equals 0. It's basically the y-axis. And we have the line y equals 4, which is basically a vertical line. So this is the shaded region. That's the region that we're interested in. The radius is between the axis of rotation, which is the y-axis, and the curve. So that is basically That's r of y. Now notice that r of y is the same as x. x is the distance between the y-axis and the curve. So we could say that r of y is equal to x. Now we need to get r of y in terms of y if we want to find the volume rotate about the y-axis. So we need to find out what x is equal to in terms of y. So we have this equation. If y is equal to x squared, then if we take the square root of both sides, we can see that x is equal to the square root of y. So let's replace x with root y. So the radius in terms of y is equal to the square root of y. Now, to find the volume of this region when it's rotated about the y-axis, we can use this equation. v is equal to pi integration from c to d. Those are values on the y-axis. r of y dy squared. At the origin, the y value is 0. And at the line y equals 4, y is 4. So therefore c is 0, d is 4. r of y, we know it's the square root of y, and we have to square it. The square root of y squared is just going to be y. So now we can integrate the function. The integration of y to the first power is y squared over 2, evaluated from 0 to 4. And let's not forget the constant in front. So now let's plug in those numbers. Let's start with the top number, 4. So it's 4 squared over 2 minus 0 squared over 2. 4 squared is 16. 0 squared is just 0. And 16 divided by 2 is 8. 
So the volume is going to be a pi. Now it's your turn. Try this example. Let's say y is equal to x raised to the 2 thirds. And the curve is bounded by the lines x equals 0 and y equals 1. And we're going to rotate it about the y-axis. Find the volume of this solid that forms once you rotate this curve bounded by those lines about the y-axis. Feel free to pause the video as you work on this example. So let's begin with a graph. So the graph y equals x to the 2 thirds, it's an increase in function, and it increases at a decreasing rate. It looks like that. The line x equals 0 is basically the x-axis, and y equals 1, that's a horizontal line. So we can see that the y values are 0 and 1, and we're rotating about the y-axis. So this is the shaded region, and the radius, that's r of y. Now once again, r of y is equal to x. And it turns out that r of x is equal to y. Now let me explain. So let's say if we have this curve, and we know this is x. x is the distance between the y-axis and the curve. And that's also the radius relative to the y-axis. So r of y is always going to be equal to x. Now in the first example, when we had y equals x squared, and we were revolving about the x-axis, r of x was the distance between the x-axis and the curve. But notice that r of x is parallel to the y-axis. So r of x is equivalent to y. But since y is equal to x squared, and if r of x is equal to y, r of x is equal to x squared. And that's what we did in the first example. But it's important to understand that r of x is equal to y, and r of y is equal to x. Now let's go back to this problem. So if r of y is equal to x, what's r of y in terms of y? So now let's use the equation that we have in the beginning. So we know y is equal to x raised to the 2 thirds. So we need to solve for x. And the only way we can do that is by raising both sides to 3 over 2, which is the reciprocal of 2 over 3. When you raise one exponent to another, you need to multiply the two exponents. 2 over 3 times 3 over 2 is 1. The 3's cancel, and the 2's will cancel. So you get x to the first power, or simply x. Therefore, x is y to the 3 over 2. And since r of y is equal to x, then r of y is also equal to y raised to the 3 over 2. All we need to do is replace x with y to the 3 halves. Now once you have the radius in terms of y, we could find the volume of the solid that is produced when rotating about the y-axis. So now let's use this formula. So let's replace c with 0 and d with 1. And let's replace ry with y to the 3 halves. And let's not forget to square it y to the 3 halves squared. We need to multiply the two exponents. 3 over 2 times 2, which is 2 over 1. The 2's cancel, so you just get 3. So what we now have is v is equal to pi, integration 0 to 1, y to the 3rd, dy. The antiderivative of y to the 3rd is y to the 4th over 4, evaluated from 0 to 1, multiplied by pi. So let's begin by plugging in 1. So it's 1 to the 4th over 4 minus 0 to the 4th over 4. 1 to the 4th is basically 1. 0 to the 4th is just 0, so the final answer is pi over 4.
And that's it for this problem.